So are you somebody who decided to start a diet this year? Well, here's some news you might not want to hear. According to our next guest research, diets typically start failing around the six-month mark. And going on a diet can actually lead to future weight gain. Joining us now to help break all of this down, the science behind why diets don't work, is Mark Schatzker. Nice to see you again. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's get right to the point. What happens at that six-month mark that makes diets fail? Well, it's very interesting because this is the problem. People start the diet and it works and all diets work. This is the myth. We think some diets are better than others. They all work. People lose the weight. They look good. They get complimented. Their old clothes fit. But right around the six to eight month mark is when things start to go the other way. They swear something's changed. The scale must be lying. So what people should do if they think of going on a diet is make a mark in, in their calendar around midpoint in January or sorry, June or July. Mm. That's when the going will get tough. And what they're running into to is it's not a lack of will, it's not a failure, they blame themselves, they're running into their brain. Mm, so it's a human error type of messaging. That sucks because it's right in time for summer too. So why is it that from a statistical point of view, going on a diet is often a predictor of future weight gain? Well, it, it tells us two things. It tells us either that diets are playing some role in actually causing weight gain, but what we can say with even more certainty is that it, it's not working. This culture that we have of thinking that we can make this approach and change something in our daily routine and what we eat is not nearly as effective as we think. That, that we go into it thinking it's going to work, it's probably not going to work, and we need to rethink the strategy generally. I want to ask you more uh, about the brain and our brains. You say the key to understanding body weight is really to understand how our brain thinks about food. Let's dive a little bit deeper into that. So how do we do that? Yes, so, so this is very important. The brain regulates body weight. The same way your brain regulates your, your body temperature, it regulates your heart rate, it regulates how much you weigh. Now this surprises us because we think, no, I can choose what I want to eat. But we know this to be true because when we go on a diet, we find that over time we get hungry, we get tired, and that is your brain intervening and saying, I want you to gain the weight that you lost. But it also works the other way when scientists do overfeeding studies. They try to feed people a lot of food. They had to do these studies in prisons because it was so hard to have subjects stay in the study. It's the opposite of dieting. Food becomes awful. And, and then when the study's over, people lose the weight. So what we need to understand is that the brain is far more intelligent. The stomach isn't some kind of unfillable pit. In fact, every time you eat, as you taste food, the brain is taking a measurement of the energy coming in. It then measures the energy in that food. Mm. So we really need to rethink um, that our brain knows much more about what we're eating. So all of these tactics we have dieting or even changing the, the sensory nature of food, things like artificial sweeteners, fat replacers, aren't having the effect that we think they're having. In fact, they're probably having the reverse effect, making it worse. So is that the same thing as your brain sending you messages? So let's say I'm eating something and it wants me to eat more. Should I be trusting that message? Well, I think I think the problem we get into is um, when you fool the brain, the, the brain is aware of that. So, so things like fat replacers, you know, light salad dressings, light mayonnaise, the brain makes a mental note of that. And, and every time it approaches that cue, it doesn't know if it can trust what it's getting. So this is a, what they call a, an uncertainty response, reward prediction error. And that, that amplifies our motivation to eat. And that's just what we see when we look at the brain scans of people with obesity. It's not that they enjoy food more, it's that they want to eat more. So, so the problem we have with food isn't that it's too delicious is that we're kind of on this mission to consume calories because we've been we've been tinkering with with the, the nature of food with how our brain understands food so speaking of enjoyment what role does pleasure play when it comes to eating then it, it plays an enormous role and I think that's the biggest thing we've gotten wrong we say things like if it tastes good spit it out um, mm -hmm. when I wrote my book the end of craving I spent a lot of time in northern Italy this is one of the world's culinary destinations epicenters people fly by the plane load just so they can eat as the northern Italians are eating they, they have rules uh, in the in the Chamber of Commerce rules about how certain recipes must be made they even have a golden noodle a tagliatelle noodle cast in gold um, this is how passionate they are about food their rate of obesity is less than 8%. Mm. So this is actually very good news because it tells us we can have a passionate, loving relationship with food and literally, literally not mm. pay a heavy price. Oh, man, I'm just hungry. Mark, thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Yeah, always great to be here. Thanks. And Mark's new book is called The End of Craving. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.